Right. And we're underway here. The Celtics in white, the Bulls in red, and Boston control. Right up. Dennis Johnson. We'll check the matchups. Guarded by Jordan inside McHale, and McHale gets a quick poop inside. Van Allback hoping that their center, Dave Corzine, will be able to muscle Kevin McHale, take his inside game away from him. But the Celtics have a definite size advantage over the Chicago Bulls, who may be a little quicker, but they prefer not to run. At least they didn't in the first game. Jordan misses, and McHale gets the rebound. Danny Ainge had a fine year. Larry Bird, guarded by Woolrich. And Corzine gets the rebound for Chicago. Amazingly, in the regular season, in the season series, the Bulls had an edge in offensive rebounding over the Celtics. Not many teams can claim that. Oakley and Sidney Green, two real quick board bangers. Green starts it off the bench. Parrish blocks, and they're going to call goaltending against Robert Parrish and credit Michael Jordan. So it looks already as if the Celtics are going to give a lot of help to Michael Jordan. The first defense against Michael Jordan is Dennis Johnson. He's got to try and keep him out of the middle and angle him off the hoop a little bit. He tried five different players on Jordan. Ultimately, he got a bit fatigued. Not before 49 points, however. Dennis Johnson in seven in a row at one stretch in the third period. Misses here. One of the things I was looking for early, Dick, is the tempo of the game by the Bulls to try and get some fast break opportunities. Jordan found his way in once again and has his second basket. All four points in the early going, and a minute and a half has transpired. Mikhail guarded by Corzine. Toughest matchup in the league, maybe. Corzine does not have the foot speed to stay with Mikhail, who gives power forwards, much quicker players, a lot of problems. Last year, he was the sixth man. Until the playoff, Cedric Maxwell gone from the scene with the Clippers, and so McHale was the starter this year. Nearly two minutes elapsed. Corzine, good pass from Jordan inside the Parrish with a block shot. Good pass, but Parrish was there. That was an attempt to get Corzine involved. Parrish guarded by Oakley in a big size edge there. Goes up, and Corzine with a fine play just stuffed Parrish. And Chicago coming back in a tie game. Jordan with a move on Johnson, blocked by McHale. And already you see that everyone is going to take a hand. The Stan Albeck sees two in trying to help Dennis Johnson guard Michael Jordan. If they get by, if Michael Jordan gets by Dennis Johnson, the other Celtics are going to clog up the lane, it looks like. What should Jordan do in that case? Look, either put it off the glass and hope that one of his freer players can get an offensive rebound or make a direct pass to one of those free players. Bird, good position inside. Gets it out to Ainge. McHale again. McHale with another basket. McHale has six, and Jordan has six, and we're tied with those numbers. Corzine, with all his beef, is still letting Kevin McHale get the sweet position down and close to the hoop. Nearly three minutes gone by, opening period, and we're tied. Orlando Woolrich, long range. Woolrich scored 37 points and had a tremendous game in the one game the Bulls beat the Celtics in the regular year. Well, they did it with fast break basketball, Dick. And I think that's where Orlando is at his best, out on the open court. In the first game, the Bulls did not use that speed advantage at all. Harris scored after McHale's miss. Celtics known for getting the ball down court in a hurry. In a lot of ways, Jordan short there. Inside, Oakley fights his way. Chipped up and finally drops in. May have been Corzine, and it was. have a foul against Chicago. Dave Corzine commits the foul. Well, Corzine, an attempt right here as trying to take away position, but you can't let Kevin McHale get that close to the hoop. McHale misses the shot. And here's Jordan over to Woolrich. Woolrich averaged 29 against the Celtics this season. McHale the rebound out to Ainge. Chicago getting back defensively. Corzine has a great inside position on a rebound, but didn't use it. Ames throws the ball into the third row. And Casey Jones, who has won 60 or more games four times. Both teams shooting well in the opening moments. 8.07 on the clock. Chicago by two. McHale finds Paris, and Oakley fouls him. What can you do realistically, Tommy, when you have a 6'9 Oakley and a Corzine, who's 6'11", 
but not a big 6'11 against the likes of McHale, Parrish, and later on Walton. What they're trying to do, Stan Allback, is put experience against Kevin McHale and Dave Corazine, knowing that the Celtics don't like to use Parrish. He's their second low post option, hoping that the Celtics won't use that against Oakley to take advantage of his inexperience. Here's Parrish, who symbolized the size edge with a 14-rebound average against the Bulls in the six games during the regular year. I think that matchup, Parrish against Oakley, is their saber matchup. Whenever they really have some problems, they may go to that one. They're tied at 10. Game has been tied five times. Corzine moving outside. Bird guarding him, if you want to call it that. Bird does not like to guard someone. The basket counts, and a good play and a slice move in there by Orlando Woolridge. Interesting matches that match, matchup stick by Casey Jones. Bird is guarding Corzine, and McHale takes Woolrich. Normally, you would expect Bird to take Woolrich, but Casey feels McHale, the bigger player, will be able to do a better job, take away the speed of Woolrich. McHale with the personal foul and a three-point play by Orlando Woolrich, and Chicago leads 13 to 10. Harris up against Oakley. Out of bounds. Chicago ball. Of course, Larry Bird, as you pointed out many times in the past, is probably one of the best safety men. A good team defender, not perhaps individual defenders. So the last thing Casey wants to do is to have Bird guard one of the firepower men for Chicago. It's too much of a burden for Bird, and it's a smart adjustment by Casey Jones, in my opinion. Oakley hits from outside, so four of the starting five have scored for the Chicago Bulls. So they have. Spread the sugar around a little bit. Dennis Johnson misses, gets his own rebound. And try to get it over to Larry Bird, and Oakley may be called for his second personal foul. What a year and a strong finish for the ninth pick, Charles Oakley. He's going to be a bona fide star in this league if he isn't already. He's got some things to learn, like uh, how to get that shot off in a low post, but boy, does he bang on the board. Actually drafted by Cleveland and then traded to Chicago in the deal involving Keith Lee, the rookie from Memphis State. Came from Virginia Union. A year later, is playing at Boston Garden in the NBA playoffs. Celtic stick uh, starting off not running as well, at, just like the other night. B to A. Dennis Johnson. There's Walton and Seasting on the Celtic bench. Maybe the key reasons why the Celtics have had such a great year and good passing by Boston. And it's 15 to 12. Of course, the Bulls are getting back defensively. Stop that break. When the Celtics put the pressure on the defense by pushing it up fast, that's when they're at their best, both for layups and low post play. Eight on the shot clock. Oakley hit one, fakes Parrish, goes in strong, and gets the basket. Charles Oakley at 6'9", leading rebounder for the Bulls this year. Stan Albeck's shot shot has to be complete by now. The only man who hasn't scored in the starting group has been Kyle Macy. Ainge goes for three and nearly had it. Spun out. Rebound by Oakley. Chicago had a 12-point lead in the first half of the game against the Celtics Thursday. Jordan trying to fake Bird. Can't do it. Hits the jumper, but Bird played pretty well defensively against Jordan there. Hi, I'm Dave DeBuscher of the Championship Knicks, and you're watching Classic Sports Network. Four tires fueling out the door. We asked the hottest guys in the pits to switch antiperspirants. Ultra dry degree, body heat activated. When your body heat rises, degrees new ultra dry form releases extra protection. Work better than my old stick. It kept me dry, ultra dry. New from degree. For everyone who'd rather do it themselves, we make the new generation of Wagner Power Painters with power, control, and versatility like never before. If it needs painting, staining, or sealing, the choice is easy. Get a Wagner and get it done. It's a 170 horsepower race bread engine. It's double wishbone suspension that slices, dices, and Julianne's corners. It's quite possibly all the fun you need. It's the Integra from Acura, the true definition of luxury. Yours.
Today, a breath of fresh air blew into the NBA when a 19-year-old kid made his debut and stole the show. He was different. He played with such emotion. It's very simple. He had eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> Before he played, you could get seats. That's why they call him what they do. The great thing about life is you never know what you might want to do next. With the American Express card, it can be anything you like. When you ship with Priority Mail, it's a great way to save money. But what about other parts of the world? There's global Priority Mail. And here's the best part. Give us a few days more, and you can save up to 70% over FedEx or UPS. So, what's your global priority? Try Global Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Watch classic sports. It's the greatest of all time. My cable company just picked it up. You'll come over. Cool. And this time, bring chips. I'm calling my cable company. I gotta get classic sports, and you can't stop me. Classic sports, classic So don't leave your friends out in the cold. Spread the word about Classic Sports Network today. We're back on Classic Sports, enjoying more classic NBA basketball. And have you noticed how many of these great games on Classic Sports are ones that took place in Boston Garden? Such as the case in 1986 in this opening round matchup between Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls, and the Boston Celtics. Now, Jordan has lived up to his 49-point Game 1 reputation with 17 points in the first quarter alone. But it isn't Bird he's dueling offensively. It's Kevin McHale who started off well, scoring 12 for the Celtics. We go back now to famed Boston Garden with five minutes left in the second quarter and the Bulls leading the Celtics by three. Jordan comes in replacing George Gervin. I don't believe he even attempted a shot in the time he was in there. Foul was on Corzine. The three-point play with five minutes to go. Cuts the Bulls' lead to two. Well, that's a terrible thing. You, a guy like uh, George Gervin, with all the playoff experience and a great offensive ability, not to get a shot off while he's in there. He's a weapon. Bird guarding Banks. Rainbow shot. Misses Paxson. Safety man. Intercepts. In the banks. Good spin move, but Walton blocks it. And Walton's, or they said Banks stepped on the line. It's going to be Boston Ball. So Bill Walton playing a major role off the bench. And Sidney Green, who played 11 minutes, comes coming back in the ball game for Chicago. And the crowd is up because the Celtics can tie it here. And they do. No. Foul before the shot. Uh, Gene Banks is really having his problems offensively and defensively. I think he's talking to himself and making this game much more difficult than it has to be. Taking some bad shots. Last time he had Walton in the low post. When, whenever he thinks that's a mismatch in his favor, he got to go back to the scoring, uh, back to the playbook, because there's no way he should be taking Bill Walton to the hoop in the low post. Banks goes out, he scored four points, and Larry Bird can tie the game. We have had five ties early on before Chicago moved out in front and led by as many as 11. It's the first tie since we were knotted up at 10 apiece. 420 remaining in the first half. Chicago led 33-25 after one period. Bird is on green, ball knocked away. It's still Chicago. Oh, if Bird forced to guard uh, Sidney Green, that might be a good matchup for the Bulls to go to. Let Green get in the low post. McHale is guarding Woolridge, who's been ice cold. Jordan against Dennis Johnson. Jordan puts Chicago up again, 45 to 43. 19 for Michael Jordan. That's his first points of this second period. That's what the Celtics do so well. They pick on people. The Bulls are not picking on people here in the first half. They don't have that many weapons, although if they go with a quick team, that may be their answer. Ceasley misses. Woolridge the rebound. Chicago does have a quickness edge on the Celtics generally down the roster. Have not used it that effectively other than, to, you know, quick steps like this from Michael Jordan. Jordan going in. Baseline defended by Walton. Out of bounds, Celtics ball, and Jordan shows a little frustration.
Dennis Johnson over Jordan. Sidney Green the rebound. 3.15 to go. Jordan inside the Warriors. Basket good and a foul. And that looked like a Celtic play. When he gets in the paint, remember, try and angle him off. He gets everybody looking because their concern is him. And he has become alert as a, himself as a decoy for somebody to slip behind the defenders who have lost their attention. And Woolrich was smart at that time to get open. Interestingly enough, Walton with the foul, his third. So the two Celtic centers, Parrish and Walton, each a burden with three personal fouls right now. And Parrish on the bench. 48 to 43 in favor of Chicago, winding down to three minutes to go in the half. Danny Ainge will return, and Jerry Seasting goes out for the Celtics. And we'll have a timeout ourselves with just one second, less than three minutes to go in the half. You're watching the Bulls Battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. You're into the game. Get into the gear. Have you heard about nothing but hoops? It's the official catalog of the NBA. You can get NBA Authentics. That's the same stuff players wear. Hey, it might even help your game. Get the coolest stuff from any team, anytime, anywhere. Even WNBA stuff. What more could you ask for? For your free Nothing But Hoops catalog, call 1-800-301-4000. That's 1-800-301-4000. I love this stuff. Funerals are a very difficult thing for a family to go through. Besides the sorrow, loved ones are left with the decisions and the overwhelming details of arranging a funeral. And funerals can cost thousands of dollars. That's why the Mature Life Plan was formed. It relieves families of the worry, cost, and confusion over funeral details by providing cash for final expenses. This is the kind of plan that gives you peace of mind. With the Mature Life Plan, everything's done by mail. There's no medical exam, no health questions, and you can't be turned down for coverage. Your rates will never increase, your benefits will never decrease, and your plan cannot be canceled. Call, and we'll send you free information about the Mature Life Plan. You have absolutely no obligation. Find out how you can protect your loved ones. Call now. To receive free information, call 1-800-883-5995. Stars. They shine. They shimmer. And boy, can they shoot! Classic Sports Network presents Phi Beta Classics, the most exciting college basketball games in history with the biggest stars of the game. Jordan. Ewing. Wilkins. Drexler. So if you want to see some stellar college hoop action, watch Phi Beta Classics. Tonight at 8 Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. The championship for Tittle was his white whale. He chased it for 15 years. Boom, we cross him. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. This guy crosses here, he crosses here. Replay, a Classic Sports Network special event, Saturday at 8 p.m. on Classic Sports. Celtics inbounding and Larry Bird. What's the story with Bird today? How are the Bulls playing? Bird said that his prime function, he thought, was to really develop the inside game for the others and not to look for a shot. But the Bulls are also getting out there and challenging him on his outside shot. McHale draws the foul. And looks like he hit his head. McHale scored all his 12 points in the first period. He has none this quarter. Larry Bird all, has all of his 11 this period. Let's see what happens here. He gets sandwiched. And somebody comes over. And actually what happened, it looked like he got a little whiplash or an elbow in the forehead. Dave Corzine commits his third foul. Oakley and Corzine each with three. So McHale trying to get the cobwebs out. Want to remind you that you're watching the second game of a best of five first round NBA playoff at Boston Garden. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here on CBS. The Boston Celtics with the best record in the league and a 41 and one record at the Garden this year. Trailing right now 48 to 43 and 256 to go in the first half. Foul story. Parrish and Walton, the two Celtic centers, have three, and Oakley Corzine also three. And his eye is cut there, too, Dick. That was a nice little elbow he got there. Chicago had scored five in a row to break a 43 all tie before the free throw. 13 on the shot clock, Jordan. 
Inside to Woolridge, spins around, basket counts, and a foul. Great move by Orlando Woolridge, and keep in mind, he's had a knee problem and a sprained wrist, but he showed no effects of it there. They played a little two-on-two -two basketball, and that freed up Woolridge. He was, uh, Dennis Johnson ended on up on him originally. McHale has been trying to guard him, but uh, when you do stuff like that, the Celtics switch a lot. You gotta look for the advantage on the mismatch. They finally got to it. Foul was on McHale, his second. It's 50 to 44, two and a half minutes to play in the opening half. Chicago leading. And they've led practically all the way in this first half. Bird banks it. Tips out. Tipped in the air. Volleyball comes down to Eames. Walton. McHale in the corner. Eames scraps his way. And a new clock, Bird. Inside to McHale, and the basket. Celtic passing at its very best, and it's a four-point Chicago lead. Two minutes to go in the half. You know, the guards' patience of the, of the Celtics to find that good matchup is what really makes this team click. Jordan controlling against Dennis Johnson, and they isolate him. This is it all. Save, though. did everything but score on that sequence. Bird tries that extra pass. Whistle. No basket. And a three-second violation called against Boston. And even Stan Albeck's enjoying this first half. Danny Ainge makes one great steal here. Goes up high. I mean, that's a great athletic skill there to take it away from a bigger man. Four-point lead for Chicago. Sidney Green is up on high, setting a screen. Johnson trying to fight through it on a switch. Bird guards Jordan, and Jordan hits the jumper anyway. Michael Jordan, 21 points, and it's 52 to 46 Bulls. Looking inside of McHale, nothing doing. Corzine denying. Dennis Johnson misses a three. Walton, though. Jordan with under a minute to go, and the ball bouncing into the hands of the Bulls. Corzine. Inside to Paxson. Paxson gets the basket, and now the Chicago Bulls have opened it up 54 to 46, and they have been the strong team down the stretch in this quarter. They played good push up basketball that time. Some of the Celtics' big people didn't get back. McHale, off balance, draws the foul. Stan Albeck made comments after game one that he got less of a break from the officials and that the Celtics were able to use mayhem, to say the least, inside. Of course, Casey Jones said, well, if they're playing a physical game, what do you expect? They should commit most of the foul. In any event, Corzine has number four. Well, I used to be a coach. I used to use rhetoric like that, too. It's like a coach's book for coming into the Boston Garden on how to get the officials on your side. Not just the Boston Garden, but anytime you you're on the road. It doesn't seem to help much here looking at the record of the Celtics this year you can see the blood on the jersey of Kevin McHale from that cut left eye hits the free throws Banks is in the ball game with 38 seconds to go Chicago leading by six and they'll call the foul on Ainge second foul but that will put the Celtics into the penalty and so John Paxson will shoot two oh, that was kind of a chicken foul <laughs> it looked more like Paxson fell down and Ainge fouled him Paxson, of course, comes from a great bloodline of basketball people. Of course, he must have played against his dad. I certainly did. A great player. With the Lakers and the Royals, and his brother, of course, Jim, is with the Portland Trailblazers. They want this man here to shoot more. They want him to get that outside shot going. They feel he can push it up the floor better than even uh, Kyle Mason. 34 seconds to go. Eight-point lead for Chicago. Their biggest lead was 11. Ainge taking it all the way in. Bird tipping. Walton tips it in. And Bill Walton with six points in the ball game and 13 rebounds has been the key center, not Parrish so far for the Celtics. Celtics used some great stuff on the offensive boards on those fast breaks. That penetration by Danny Ainge that time, even though he missed it, he pr produced the two points for the team. Six on the shot clock, so there's a three-second differential. Jordan with a fake shot and draws the foul. Dennis Johnson beside himself with frustration after that, did not agree with it. 
That's his first personal foul. When Michael Jordan beats you going to the right, you have to lean across him and bring your hand down, and that's when an official will normally call the foul. Mike Tebow, who is one of the assistant coaches with Chicago, said about Jordan, he's got the, the jump shot ability of a Jerry West and the ability to go to the hoop of a Julius Irving. Pretty good people to be compared with. I call him Mercury. You have a whole Mercury in your hand, he's all over the place. Foul with three seconds to go, and now it's Michael Jordan who is complaining. There is Mike Tebow kneeling down. Actually, Tebow is not on the bench. He must be upstairs sending in plays from uh, from the top. The from foul. the helicopter, huh? Sidney Green gets called with his third personal foul. Corzine has four. Oakley and Green, three for Chicago. Parrish and Walton each with three for Boston. The Bulls have played as well as they can play. And the Celtics really haven't gotten their game together whatsoever, and the Celtics are still in it. Celtics are rarely out of it this early. I guess, though, in the one loss they experienced to Portland here, they were out of it. Early. That was a route. Right. One out of two, two seconds to go. And then that shot will not count if it goes. Larry Bird had 12 all this period. But Michael Jordan has 23 points. And the Chicago Bulls, who need a win here, and that would make headlines in any event, any team beating the Celtics at Boston Garden, lead 58 to 51 at halftime. Tonight at 7, Bud Greenspan profiles Bob Beeman, Nadia Comaneci, and other athletes on Reflections in Gold, The Untouchables. Then, old reliable Tommy Hendrick talks about the pride and tradition of the New York Yankees on Distant Replay. And at 8, Air Jordan leads Carolina against Steve Alford Choosers in the 1984 NCAA Tournament. Tonight on Classic Sports Network. Does a car have instincts? Can it anticipate the next curve? One car can make you believe it does. With a patented steering and suspension system, you have the agility to outsmart the most elusive of roads. Get low 1.9% financing or great lease rates on Intrigue and all Oldsmobiles. Intrigue, a sophisticated twist on a sports sedan. Hey, go work to my kid. Thanks. Coca-Cola card. Good at thousands of places. But not here. Use it over and over. Just try and wear this thing out. Okay. Let's see. Wash. Rinse. Spin. Dry it, okay? How's the Coke card? It's clean. April fresh. But will it still work? Still works. <laughs> the Coca-Cola card. Clean up. Big men today. Shaq. Akeem, Patrick, Alonzo, Robinson. Boy, I wish I was playing today. Watch Will play on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Let's take a look at some of the key statistics of the first half. Michael Jordan owned the backcourt. 23, the Celtics combined had only eight. Rare for the Chicago Bulls to turn it over only one time in a half. But that's what they did. But when it came to the offensive rebounding, Boston owned that aspect of the game, and they out-rebounded the Bulls 33-18. to 18. And when was the last time you saw the Celtics shoot 38% in a half? And that's what they did. Yet they trailed by only seven, underway third period. Kyle Macy in the backcourt along with Michael Jordan who has the ball now. Gene Banks starts it forward with Oakley and Woolrich. This is a very unusual lineup that the Bulls have out there. Who is playing center? Oakley, Woolrich. They got a small front line in there, the Bulls, but very fast. Maybe they're going to run. Celtics only lead in the game was 2 to nothing to start things. Inside of McHale. 
Mikhail starts things in the second half, and he has 19 points, and it's a five-point lead. Oakley hardly played in that first half. As a matter of fact, just seven minutes and scored four points. Cindy Green, the key man again, perhaps off the bench, as Woolridge misses. He's taken some wild shots, hasn't he? I think he got fouled that time. Looking inside, McHale against Oakley. Oh. Company misses that shot. Parrish underneath the hoop. Had to bring it out. Lost it out of bounds. Celtics with a tremendous domination off the glass. Woolrich with 13 points. He has the ball along with Jordan's 23. Woolrich missed inside. Woolrich on that one-on-one -on -one game, I think they ought to park that for a while and find somebody else. <laughs> Banks working against Bird on a post-up. McHale tried a double team and Woolrich misses again. Here's Michael Jordan. Basket will be good and a foul and 25 for Michael Jordan in the game. You know, this lineup that they have in there, I, I, I got to ask him after the game why it's in there because I, it, there's no real size and uh, no real strength. There's no, well, Oakley's oh, other pretty strong, Oakley. but yeah. there's no inside game or board banging going on. You mean Sidney Green? Sidney Green, I think. He's got three fouls. Maybe they're trying to save him, but McHale can have a field day against this unit. A minute and a half. Gone by in the third period, 61 to 53, an eight-point lead. Bird inside the three-point line, hits for two. Larry Bird has 14 points. They've been not allowing him to get that shot off, have they? They've been in his jersey with him. They've taken his defender out of the normal team defense. Ainge is on Macy, who has attempted only one shot in the ball game. Woolridge working against McHale goes in and a good move by Orlando Woolridge 15 in the game I guess they're going to give it to him until he gets it right <laughs> 6 for 18 is the shooting for a Woolridge 33% Ainge for 3 and the rebound by the O Stan Albeck does not have a lot of the respect for Kevin McHale's defense Jordan goes up no basket and a foul Dennis Johnson with his third personal foul and a timeout here with 9.38 to go in the third. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Thanks for the truck, Dad. What'd you do? Not much. Where'd you go? Kurtz. You still talking about moving that old barn? No. The best long-term quality of any full-size pickup belongs to Chevy. Got a scratch? Nope. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over. So you can paint every room in your house in almost half the time. Get the Wagner Power Roller for fast, professional results. Today, a breath of fresh air blew into the NBA when a 19-year-old kid made his debut and stole the show. He was different. He played with such emotion. It's very simple. He had eyes in the back of his head. <laughs> Before he played, you could get seats. That's why they call him what they do. The great thing about life is you never know what you might want to do next. With the American Express card, it can be anything you like. It's a 170 horsepower race bread engine. It's double wishbone suspension that slices, dices, and Julianne's corners. Integra from Acura, the true definition of luxury, yours. 
If swing is your thing, then step into the ring every Friday night as classic sports headlines the greatest bouts of all time. From cool cats and hard-hitting hipsters to the hottest licks and rivalries the sweet science has ever known. It's boxing's most happening championship bouts. Plus, get the inside beat with the word on the street from hard-nosed scribes who don't pull any punches. It's Madison Square Garden Night on Friday Night at the Fights with guest Jack Newfield. Friday at 8, only on Classic Sports. Hi, I'm Dave Collins, and you're watching Classic Sports Network. So Michael Jordan with 49 in game one, 26 right now, and Tommy asked some of the Celtic guards their observations on how to play Michael Jordan. Uh, foul him and hope someone else can come in and do the job. <laughs> you know, if, if the team can't stop him, maybe he'll shoot himself to death. I don't know. I guess you'd give a call to Clint Eastwood because uh, there's not much you can do at that point. <laughs> Just let him go. <laughs> they all tried on Thursday, including this man, Dennis Johnson. But when the second half came to play, Dennis Johnson, with a tremendous effort, he had seven baskets in a row in the third period in 26, and he did a better job against Jordan. By the way, Celtic guards are shooting three for 13. Chicago with it with Jordan with nine and a half. Long range. Jordan hits. And a 10-point lead for the Chicago Bulls. Keep in mind, their biggest lead in the first half was 11, and they're close to that now. Crowd getting a bit anxious again, Tom. Boy, and Gene Banks is doing it. Well, of a job of trying to stay with Larry Bird. Not an easy task. Oakley comes out to meet him, and Bird hits. Larry Bird now hitting two outside shots in the first three minutes of this third period. Casey Jones counts on Larry Bird to bring him out of the doldrums. He's done it. I'm at a Philadelphia game here when he did it to the tune of three three-point plays in the final moments of the first half. Jordan working against Dennis Johnson. McHale getting ready to help out. He does, but Banks is there with a feed. Go, and Parrish commits the foul, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. Four on double zero. Well, Larry Bird forgot Gene Banks and let him sneak in there. Bird, the ultimate team defender for the Celtics, was had his total concentration on Jordan that time. The advantage of the great depth the Celtics have Bill Walton, Parrish goes out. He has scored six points and is burdened with four fouls, but Bill Walton has six points and 13 rebounds in the game, and he has been the big center force for the Celtics today. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at Boston Garden. Capacity crowd, 262nd consecutive. First weekend of the NBA playoffs here on CBS, and the Celtics trailing the Chicago Bulls by 10, 67 to 57. A big soccer if the Bulls can hold the lead. Boston lost only once here all year. Leading though, one to nothing in the best of five. Walton puts up the short shot. Uh, there was a little confusion factor that uh, Stan Allback hoped to introduce into his defense in the low post. Sometimes double team, sometimes not. Send the double from different directions, it's working. Jordan again handling the ball with 11 on the shot clock. Dueling with Dennis Johnson. Walton loses the rebound to Woolridge and fouls him. That was a tough go inside of two determined men going for one ball. And Bill Walton commits his fourth foul. So both Celtic centers, Walton and Parrish, have four fouls. That's Walton spreading out. But the quicker player, Woolridge, is able to step inside. Normally, Walton plays against the bigger, slower guys that don't have the ability to use their quick feet to step inside. You saw what Sidney Green was able to do to him in the first half. But the foul story now becomes focused on the two Celtic centers who have four fouls. If one or both get into foul trouble, that could be a major factor down the stretch. Should be, but uh, they're smart enough to use those fouls. I would be, I'm not too concerned uh, if I were Casey Jones at this point for fouls. Don't forget, you have that man, Greg Kite, in his third year, who's quite a banger, who has seen some quality minutes this year. Nearly four minutes gone by, third period, and a whistle and a foul away from the ball. All against Chicago and a derisive cheer from the crowd, who would think that the Bulls have had the edge in ball so far. Charles Oakley, that's his fourth personal foul. Four on Oakley, the rookie from Virginia Union. Double team on McHale. Open is Johnson, penetrates, and scores. Now that time they doubled, and they forgot to get to Dennis Johnson quick enough. The rotation of the defense of the Bulls wasn't there. 
Eight-point lead for Chicago. They led by seven at the half. 7.39 remaining in the third. Double on Jordan. Inside, and Banks lost the ball. Got hit in the eye, but lost the ball. Celtics pushing it up, and Ainge goes in. And the foul will be against Chicago. Ainge may be the spark that the Celtics haven't had to get their fast break going so far. Well, he's their real push man because he has a desire to really attack the defense. Dennis Johnson, when he gets the ball on the outlet, really kind of three-quarters it up the court. Danny Ainge has got more speed to apply to the fast break than DJ does. Ainge with his first point of the ball game, averaging nearly 11 a game, coming in and a 90% free throw shooter. Misses one of them, though. Foul, by the way, was on Macy, his first. Macy with the ball, guarded by Ainge. Dennis Johnson is sticking with Jordan effectively. Jordan just can't seem to get away and losing the ball momentarily. And losing it for good is open. Celtics with Bird. To Walton. And a 20-second timeout called by Chicago. Listen to the crowd as the Celtics have come back, still trailing by five. Putting the ball on a play. He gets it out. Ethan Havlicek. Hi, I'm John Havlicek. You're watching Classic Sports Network. It's an Acura 24-valve V6, like the Acura NSX. It's the power of sequential multi-port fuel injection, like the NSX. It's four-wheel independent double wishbone suspension, like the NSX. It's comfortable seating for five, like two and a half NSXs. It's the TL from Acura, the true definition of luxury, yours. Male subject, 18 to 21. He apparently experienced no pain. Well fed, pizza, popcorn. Mm, popcorn. Eyes appear dilated from excessive movie watching, video games. Looks like he's been at it for days. Weeks. Shopping, no doubt. How do you explain that grin? He was holding this. Ah, the Coca Cola car. Jack Norworth, I, and I knew him. He was a, he was a decent man, and no finer song has, has ever been written. You know, I'm not a soft-hearted man, but that song means something bigger than just me. And people had better still be singing it when I'm uh, long gone. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Has turned up a notch here. See how Chicago responds. Woolridge. Banks. And Banks quiets them for the moment at least. Oh, what a smart play by Gene Banks. Got right in there as they went to the penetration. Got the good position on the offensive board. Celtics spreading out their offense, making Chicago play more one on one defense, not the team variety. Ainge with a move on Macy. And the foul on the pass. A one-shot foul. Let's watch Banks here on the glass you talked about. There's Larry Bird going to the penetration, and look at Banks coming right in there, steps inside with nobody really blocking him out. Timeout called by Boston with 6.27 remaining in the third. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. It's a race-inspired four-wheel double wishbone suspension. It's a Formula One-derived all-aluminum V6. It's a luxury coupe built around the premise that it's better to be looked over than overlooked. 
It's the CL from Acura. The true definition of luxury. Yours. Hey, don't work too late, kid. Thanks. Sports memory. Is it Reggie's three homers in game six? Or Michael's six three pointers in game one? Or maybe it was the time you and your dad had the best seats in the house. Send your favorite sports memory to Classic Sports Network, Murray Hill Station, P.O. Box 1830, New York, New York, 10156. Because we want to hear what you want to see. Classic Sports Network, where the legends play. Celtics have won 32 in a row at home, but the point is, in the best all-time home record in the history of the league, at 40-1, every home team has won so far in the playoffs, with the exception of the first game, when the Bullets shocked Philadelphia with that 18 to nothing spurt at the end. Well, the further you go into the playoffs, Dick, the home court advantage uh, isn't as great because the, t the, the teams are closer together in talent and they're t uh, closer together in mental toughness and battling against the home crowd. No, one thing, and that is uh, the Houston Rockets with a 2-0 lead over Sacramento have to play that Tuesday night game in the Arco Dome where the Kings were unbeaten this year. We'll see if that jinx continues. Very impressed with the Bulls in this quarter. They've used a lot of good, solid offense. Bird from Wolf. Even with that strange lineup, huh? With that strange I got to ask him after the game <laughs> why he came out. I never would have thought of this lineup. Folks, if you want to know what Tommy's doing after the game, we'll be asking Stan Albin about his lineup. They don't have a true center in there. Woolridge working against McHale. The basket is good and a foul. Orlando Woolridge gets the hoop. And Woolridge now with 19 points. You know what I think of this, Dick? I think that uh, Stan Allback really feels that there's not enough good one-on-one -on -one defenders on the Celtics. Here's the move by Woolrich against Mikhail. He feels Mikhail can't guard Woolrich. That's why he's attacking him. I would never believe it myself. I think Mikhail's a very good defensive Another player. Another point here. The Celtics shot 38% in the first half. They're 7 for 9 so far in the third period, and yet the Bulls have added a point to their lead. And a whistle before the shot. Illegal defense against Chicago. And that's a technical foul. The second time an illegal defense call is made, it's a technical. So Danny Ainge has been shooting. Interestingly enough, Larry Bird was the free throw shooting champion this year. But Ainge has been shooting the tees lately. We have not seen any tempo in this game in the third quarter whatsoever. This has been a chess match with Boris taking two minutes to think about his next move. That's how uh, long the game is developing as far as I'm concerned. No pace whatsoever. Boris, I mean Dennis Johnson you with know, the ball. Boris now. with the ball. Yeah. 5.40 to go. Bird going in on Banks. And Larry Bird with a left-handed move with 20 points now in the ball game. Keep in mind, he did not score until there were over nine minutes remaining in the first half. Well, they didn't double him that time, and uh, Banks forced him to the middle. Made him take a tough shot. He's four for four this half. Macy hits it and the foul on Ainge. And I'm sure Casey Jones is saying, here's a guy that's taken one shot in the game. Why foul him all the way out there? Well, that's a shot. And he, uh, you know, I, I, I think when you take a long distance shot like that, Kyle Macy, if he hits it, you know, all of a sudden it changes your thinking on the way you're going to drop into the paint to help. Got to go out there and try and shut him down a little bit. Ainge with three. Well, they got burned to a three-point. Fairly well, and it's 77 to 69. Once again, Chicago by eight with five minutes, ten seconds to go. Maybe I saw Bird foul against Chicago. You're right. They 
if Chicago can do it with Woolridge and, and or Jordan, the Celtics can do it with Larry Bird. And nobody got to uh, the rotation to stop that cutter quite quick enough. Almost got a hoop out of it. Two fouls now on Orlando Bull Woolridge, and Johnson is shooting two shots. Well, Bird is responding to the defense that the Bulls are playing against him. One time he doesn't get doubled, he makes the swooping move into the lane. This time he gets doubled, he sets up two easy free throws. Is that taking what the defense gives you? Well, he's a guy that, as I said in the beginning, takes advantage of every half inch. Imagine if you give him a yard. Six-point game, Chicago leading. Biggest lead was 11 in the first half. They had a 10-point lead here in this period. Jordan with a juke and a move, and Dennis Johnson got a piece of it. Boy, that was some defensive play by Dennis Johnson. Celtics can cut it to four. Knocked away, Chicago ball. Uh, that was a terrible call. Terrible call. A man was on his arm. Should have been a foul. Jordan out, up on top. A 1-4 offensive alignment for the Bulls. Macy. Working Ainge. Banks. Woolridge. He swung it nicely, but Woolridge missed it all. And the Celtics once again with a chance to cut it to four. Bird. Oh. He lost his footing, but yet made the layup. And a timeout by Stan Albeck. It's a four-point Chicago lead. Watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. We are loyal. We are obsessive. We are fans. And nothing keeps us from the game. We need cars and trucks as reliable as we are, season after season. And when the game is over, we need to know that what got us there will also get us safely home. Delivering cars and trucks that fans count on is what makes us General Motors. Delivering them in more ways than anyone else in the world is what makes us people in motion. Male subject, 18 to 21. He apparently experienced no pain. Well fed, pizza, popcorn. Mm, popcorn. Eyes appear dilated from excessive movie watching, video games. Looks like it's been at it for days, weeks. Shopping, no doubt. How do you explain that grin? He was holding this. Ah, and by Coca-Cola car. You know, I was into all that extreme stuff when I was your age. Just didn't have a fancy name for it. Plus, I never had a Subaru Outback Sport either. Too bad, Uncle. This beauty's got a ton of cargo space. Full-time all-wheel drive, more horsepower than a RAV4. You never did that, I'll bet. Sure we did. But, uh, what's the ripe for? Outback Sport, part of the Outback family from Subaru. The education of Dandy Dunn continues. We await the punt. Classic Sports Network presents a world premiere special event. We play the history of the NFL on television. Okay. Broadcasters. We're on, we're on national television. I'll finish it right now. Directors. I had my cameras everywhere. They couldn't hide from me. Pioneers. This is the story of how football changed television and how television changed football. Replay. The history of the NFL on television premieres Saturday at 8 p.m. on Classic Sports. There are so many reasons to like this game in 1986. It's so special to see Michael Jordan in his individual greatness, unable to make things happen for his team and for the Bulls to function as a team. And then you've got the Boston Celtics showing us maybe the greatest team of all time in NBA history and definitely with one of the great front lines in NBA history, Clyde. Tell me, do you think Bird, McHale, and Parrish are truly the number one front line in the history of the NBA? I think if you if you go judge them by longevity and, and winning, they have three championship rings, I, I would say so. Let's talk about the individual talents. First of all, you have Larry Bird, who was just about the complete player. And the one thing that knocks me out about him is how whenever there was a loose ball, he was always right there. He was always right in the middle of that. Couple his talents with the other three, and, and why did they work together so well? Well, they were very unselfish, they were team-oriented, and winning was the ultimate thing. No one cared who got the points or the rebounds as long as the team won, and I thought they personified that. McHale's biggest strength was? He's unstoppable inside. 
Robert Parrish's biggest strength was? Rebounding and tenacity. Birds? A consummate player. Mm -hmm. Tell you, if you also throw in the fact that Robert Parrish played well into his 40s, then you know you really were looking at something special back in 1986. Again, the Celtics took game one, looking to go up 2 nothing in the series here. All eyes were on Michael Jordan, who had 49 points worth of outrageous in game one. He was being outrageous again in game two. So let's take it back now. Team concept versus one-man show, 1986. And as Danny Ainge, he was challenged. He'll have none of it. He's going to take it as hard at the defense as he can. And now they're in a good attack position. And then Al oh, Bird, even with that stumbling move to come in and make a layup. That's what Pace can do for the Celtics. Bird, 5 for 5 this half, 22 in the ball game. Jordan and Woolridge have 48 of Chicago's 77 points. Jordan. And the Bulls still have it. Three-point shot missed by Macy. That one was not necessary. Under four minutes remaining in the third period. Keep in mind that the Bulls had a seven-point lead in the way they were playing. Tommy's opinion, anyway, should have had a bigger lead. The Celtics getting an extra life. Dennis Johnson is fouled decisively there on the give-and-go, on the pass from Bird. Well, that time, there is no tougher guard in the league. They double-teamed Bird. And they isolated Bird down there. Everybody on the weak side of the Celtics is away from the ball, but they did move quickly, but not quick, quick enough. Wedman replaces McHale, who has 19, but only two in this third period. Well, they are not going to the low post game. Casey Jones says, Larry Bird shall lead us out of the darkness, not Kevin McHale. And so far, he's been doing a pretty good job. Bill Walton has been the Celtics center, played more time than Robert Parrish, although both have four personal fouls, with 342 remaining in this third period. The Bulls now have to continue to play intelligent basketball like they did the first couple of minutes of this game. They slowed the tempo down. down don't, take, two. don't take bad shots. Move it around. And the Bullets have regained the lead over Philadelphia, 79-75. The Celtics, meanwhile, have scored six in a row. And Dennis Johnson attacks Michael Jordan, and that'll be number four on DJ. Four fouls on Dennis Johnson. Welcome to the club. Parrish and Walton, charter members right now. And Dennis is playing him straight up nose, and that means that he's Jordan with that great first step can get by Dennis because Dennis doesn't have the same kind of foot movement and foot speed. Jordan is eight for eight from the line. Going for his 30th point of the game here. This is the time of the ball game that you go to Michael Jordan, I think. He's strong. They didn't overuse him in the first half. These are the crunch points. And we have not seen Sidney Green this half. No. Nope. There's got to be a reason why. 325 remaining in the third period. I'm going to ask Stan after the game again. It's two <laughs> questions. Oakley is on Walton. Bird is there with the offensive rebound. Leading Wedman's short shot. And Oakley the rebound. Wedman had a shot he normally makes. Oakley clears with 310 to go. Jordan against Ames. 79-75 Boston. Open is Macy. And Macy hits. Seven points for Kyle Macy. And the Bulls, who had their lead cut to two, now up to six again. When he has time to sight the basket, which the penetration of Jordan gives him, he'll make that shot, Kyle Mason. Under three minutes remaining in the third period. Always been a big period for the Boston Celtics. Knocked away. Celtics possession. Let's bring you up to date again on the foul situation. Corzine and Oakley with four, Parrish Walton and Dennis Johnson with four. And before the Celtics can inbound, Jerry Seasting will come back in the ball game, replacing Dennis Johnson. That's going to put Danny Ainge on Jordan. And a drive by Ainge. And Jordan on Danny Ainge. And Ainge chalks one up there, and they're down to four points now the first field goal of the game for Ainge. Ainge might even do a better job than DJ because he's used to playing point guard shifty guys he did the other night with his quickness Jordan this is tipped up tipped up again Oakley fighting comes down to the Celtics who can cut it to two Ainge is fouled Danny Ainge 
will go to the line, 90% from the free throw line to try to bring the Celtics to two, within two points. John Paxson comes into the ball game, and Kyle Macy goes out. Macy with four fouls. Danny Ainge, you know, is, is a very big guy to play point guard. He's got exceptional quickness for his size and uh, has learned to keep, uh, contain a real good fast man between his knees. He plays straight on defense, and that's just the type of guy that might do a great job on uh, Michael Jordan. Two minutes to go in the third period. Ames with the interception. And it almost went in. So Danny Ainge is clearly the spark plug for the Boston Celtics here in the third period, leading the break, making this great defensive play and getting the crowd into the game. What a move. But Danny, you know, when you play a Michael Jordan and he knows he's got a, you get that first step on you, but that gives him a world of confidence. Danny Ainge right now is gone saying to him, you can't do it. And we're tied at 81. Six in a row run off by the Celtics. And they have erased a 10-point lead here in the third period that the Bulls enjoyed early on. Inside to Jordan. And it's Oakley who gets credit for the basket. Charles Oakley. And a technical foul has been leveled by Jake O'Donnell. I think that was an unnecessary technical foul by Jake O'Donnell. It was called from one end of the court. Danny Ainge made a gesture, and Jake O'Donnell was completely up the other end of the court. He made it. He's looking at one. Jordan, 31 points. And the Celtics trail by three with 135 to go. Take Jordan. Good step on Michael Jordan. And the basket. Great first step by Danny Ainge, who keeps the pressure on for the Celtics. And it's 84 to 83 Chicago. Taking the tempo away from the Celtics, trying to Michael Jordan right now. Ten points in this period for Ainge. And what a great shot. And a basket and a foul. You talk about birds, sheer determination. At certain points of a game, Michael Jordan has those same qualities. He's got to get, watch him get around Jordan, Danny Ainge. And strong left hand drive. And Walton right there. And here comes Jordan, but Ainge is in front of him, angles him off, turns him loose to the second defender of the Celtics. But Jordan overpowers him. And Walton has committed his fifth personal foul. Bill Walton has five. Parrish is on the bench with four. Under a minute to go, and the Bulls lead by four. Seasty to Wetman. Burns and Oakley powers his way for the rebound. And Larry Bird gets called for the foul. That's his second personal foul, and Oakley will shoot. Here comes the rebound. Oakley well inside, and Bird says, well, I'm going to try and knock it out of your hands from underneath. And he must have hit the ball into his jaw, and Bird said, I hit the ball. What a face, huh? <laughs> the face of a winner, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> Here's Charles Oakley, who's a 66% free throw shooter. Kevin McHale, who has 19 points, only two this period. The Bulls have made their last 14 free throws. Now make it 15. Walton on the bench with five. Robert Parrish also on the bench. He has four fouls. Celtics playing without a center. McHale is playing center at this point. Inside against Oakland. And the foul against Chicago. A push. A very late whistle. The shot was rebounded. Sidney Green has come into the ball game. First time he has played in the second half. Replacing Charles Oakley. 
Woolrich has his fourth personal foul, and Parrish with four comes back in, replacing Scott Webb. So Sidney Green, who performed so well in the first half for Chicago, with four points and five rebounds in brief play, in there for the first time this half. They've got a bigger team in there right now, the Boston Celtics. See if they can capitalize on that bigness, that size. You ought to be fresh. Right, because uh, Chicago is not capitalizing on their quickness and speed with fast breaks. Bird is 24. Woolridge powers his way in, blocked by McHale, out of bounds. Chicago still has it. Kevin McHale with the block shot. He's had at least one block in the last 30 games for the Celtics. Oh, Woolridge uh, rolls back, and there's McHale right there with him. Fourth block this game. Jordan against Ainge. Jumper good with 16 seconds to go, 91-85. Well, Ainge forced him left. Lost him right into the second defender, but Jordan with that great leaping ability to go over the big guys, too. Playing for the last shot, Ainge goes for three and hits it. Seven seconds, Chicago has an opportunity, leading by two. Packs it. Blocked by McHale, and that'll do it. Hi, I'm Red Auerbach. You're watching Classic Sports Network. But I ain't Mr. Outback. Good night. I heard you've been saying nasty things about my Explorer. Nah. All I said was my Outback here has better braking, quicker acceleration, and better gas mileage. You look on the bright side. You did pay a whole lot more. That's right. I did. Subaru Outback, the world's first sport utility wagon. Bye -bye. There have been only seven Wheaties champions this century. Better make that eight. Introducing Tiger Woods, a new generation of Wheaties champion. American Express Small Business Services. How can I help you? How can I help you? Right. We only work with small businesses. Why don't we start with your cash flow? And our equipment financing plan will help spread out the payments. That'll definitely give you more flexibility. How about setting up a line of credit? We can do that. Then I'll put you in touch with one of our CPAs so you can start getting ready for tax time. We can always make adjustments when your situation changes. Call 1-800-SUCCESS to find out how American Express Small Business Services can help you do more. You're watching the Bulls Battle of the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Stan Albex must feel that uh, and believe that philosophy that uh, the Celtics cannot play good one-on-one -on -one defense. And he's spreading it out so that the Celtics are forced to play that type of defense. Larry Bird. Gets the first points to start things off. He has 26 in the ball game. Jordan with 36 is the high scorer in the game. Jordan has scored 85 points in the two playoff games. Paxson guarded by Seasting. Into Green. Green is fouled. There's that spring that Sidney Green has inside. See a heck of a pick by Robert Parrish, the free bird. Gene Banks has to roll off, but Bird still has time to get the shot away. And Bird, as we say, only needs a half inch. Foul was on McHale, his third. Sidney Green has been in the shooting slump the last month. Trying to work his way out of it at a very tough time to do it. Playoffs against Boston. But this is a low post option that uh, I think has been very fruitful for them in prior ball games. He can go over, Sidney Green can go over Kevin McHale. Celtics looking to tie it again. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, fourth period. Game two, best of five. Celtics won the opening game, and they're in a dogfight here against Chicago. Trailing 92 to 90. Diving for the loose ball is Gene Banks, but the Celtics still keep possession. Chicago trying to do what only one other team has done all year, beat the Celtics here at Boston Garden. You know, you have to keep your mind together, Gene Banks, and playing a Larry Bird, particularly in the Boston Garden. You know, they throw 9,000 picks for Larry Bird to get one shot. And he, and Banks has the utmost uh, respect for Bird. He says he's the craftiest guy he's ever played against. He learns something new for his own game every time he plays it. Bird, with one second on the clock, hits a three-pointer.
And the Celtics have their first lead since the opening basket of the ball game. Dennis Johnson steals it from Jordan. Inside to Parrish. And traveling call against Robert Parrish. Here is the three-pointer with the clock running down. It comes by accident there. Bird has to pop out as you really, they could have called a foul. Instead, Bird, as the clock is winding down, has to, has to let it fly and he hits it. So now we'll see how Chicago responds to that knockdown punch by Larry Bird. Bulls with it, trailing by one. Minute and a half gone by in the fourth period. And a foul. Michael Jordan is fouled by Dennis Johnson, and that'll be number five on Dennis. So Johnson with five. Bill Walton on the bench with five fouls, and now he gets off the bench. And Robert Parrish playing with four, and Parrish will sit down. Parrish today has six points and six rebounds. There is Orlando Woolridge, who has 20 points in support of Michael Jordan's 36. Now 37 for Jordan. Michael Jordan. Well, you cannot Ooh. stop him because he handles the ball so much. And he, he, they, so much a percentage of, of the offense is designed for him to just get the ball and score. 14 for 14 from the line. Chicago regains the lead. McHale going in, and is fouled. Bring up to date on the story involving Michael Jordan. He missed 64 games of the season, and the Chicago management did not want him to play anymore. He had a broken left foot. He wanted to play. They said, okay, you can play. They wanted to limit his minutes, and they did. However, he had to sit down with 30 seconds to go in the game on the line against Indiana. He wanted to play. The crowd howled, and Michael Jordan put his foot down and said to the Chicago Bulls management, I'm going to play basketball. That's what I am, a basketball player. And they had to back down, and Jordan has played. And one of the great tributes to integrity and credibility in this sport is on the shoulders of Michael Jordan, I believe. I, I think uh, it is a great story for him to stand. He loves to play the game, and he wants to be on a winning team. Nearly two minutes gone by in this final period. Boston by one. Chicago has led virtually all the way. Jordan banks it in, and Jordan with 40 points. He had 49 in game one. As this thing went out, Ainge came back in, and Ainge has ended up with the defensive assignment now on... Give and go, Bird to Dennis Johnson. Corzine the rebound. Huh. Well, Ainge is going to guard Jordan now. Sidney Green. Bird. Dennis Johnson. McHale crashing the boards. Who wants it? McHale! He was almost on his back, Tommy. He's figuring he's going to get a foul on the play, too, but no whistle. Celtics by one. Three minutes gone by, fourth period. And a foul away from the ball. Here it is. And really banging on the boards. McHale trying to keep it live. Bird knocks it away. There's McHale, gets submarined, and oh. shoots the ball, and it should oh. have been a foul. Astonishing shot by Kevin McHale. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. It's a 170-horsepower race-bred engine. It's double wishbone suspension that slices, dices, and Julianne's corners. all the fun you need it's the integra from acura the true definition of luxury yours being in the zone is like a no other feeling in this world your hands are very numb you get chills going up through your whole body it's just you in the basket oh, he is something to watch you feel like you're unstoppable. Anything you throw up is up and go to the net. He is on fire.
two different worlds. A paper world, a digital world. Worlds that didn't always work together until now. The Xerox Document Center. The digital copier printer with so many possibilities, we put it in a video. The Document Center talks to any computer on your network. Stay at your desk and have it print, copy, collate, staple, even fax without getting up. Let the Document Center know what to do, and it shows you everything is fine. You can scan a page and see it on your screen. Now make a change and email it to George. Then on to Sally, who prints it out. Your free video also shows how the Xerox Document Center has built-in Internet access, so it responds to a print or fax command from anywhere in the world. And since it's modular and upgradable, you only buy what you need. Call for your free video now. What's digital? What's paper? What's the difference? Stars. They shine. They shimmer. And boy, can they shoot! Classic Sports Network presents Five Beta Classics, the most exciting college basketball games in history with the biggest stars of the game. Jordan. Ewing. Wilkins. Drexler. So if you want to see some stellar college hoop action, watch Five Beta Classics tonight at 8 Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. Classic Sports Network, where the legends play. 9.02 remaining. The foul was on Danny Ainge, his fourth personal foul. Been seesaw now, six lead changes, but most of them in the last two minutes. Jordan working against Ainge now. And Jordan, if he's he was hit on the hand, it looked like he lost control of the ball, but he was pushed. And if that's on Ainge, that's five on Dan. That is. Did McHale have an assist on this? Well, Danny is trying to stay one-on-one -on -one with him, bodies him. That's the wrong thing to do to body him. And then McHale pushes Ainge into Michael Jordan. On uh, a lot of fouls called on uh, on the two guards defending against Jordan right now. They're trying to save Dennis Johnson for the stretch against Michael Jordan. Or have, having Ainge play him now. 42 points. That's what you want. You want Dennis Johnson to be there down the stretch. And he has five on the bench. Inside the McHale. See you later. You overplay against McHale and he gets the ball. Just count it. And the Celtics regain the lead. 25 for Kevin McHale. Uh, Boston is really having trouble getting pace going because there, there's so much poise right now by the Bulls to get the shot they want. Jordan misses. Woolridge has the rebound. Chicago Bulls are playing as if they've been in the playoffs every year for 10 years. Sidney Green misses and finally the Celtics get it and McHale the rebound. Celtics' biggest lead was two to nothing, and now they can open up a three-point lead. Walt, great inside move, passes to Bird, doubled quickly. Good rotation for Chicago. Dennis Johnson into the ball game. Sidney Green is fouled. Going for the ball with 7.50 remaining. Stan Albeck's reaction to the action. <laughs> I like the way his tie flops up and down. And, oh, he's Oops. got a hop in his step, too, huh? Larry Bird with his fourth personal foul. Look at the litany of fouls we've got here. We've got Walton with five, Ainge with five, Dennis Johnson with five, Harris with four, Bird with four. Maybe that's what that isolation game is doing, is drawing attention to the individual one-on-one -on -one defender. I think for Casey Jones might be to try and really take the ball out of the hands of a Woolrich or a Michael Jordan with double teams. 7.50 to go, and a lot can happen. But here's a team, the Chicago Bulls, who lost 52 games. This is the first time a team has made the playoffs with 50 or more losses since the Bulls did it in 68. And they're tied in Philadelphia. And I have to say, the 76ers, you want to use the old cliche, backs against the wall, they're against the wall now. Can't afford to go down 2-0. Two, two more games coming up. Bird goes for three. Celtics lead 102 to 100. They were down by one. Now they're up by two. 32 points for Larry Bird. We told you about Bird and Jordan at the start. Block, pack 
Jackson has a shot blocked, and Ains will get an easy basket. Albeck wants a timeout. Sports Network, the greatest new network in the history of sports. This, this is my town. There ain't nothing like this place in Texas. <laughs> Great rooms. <laughs> this is the most famous strip of highway in the world. Beautiful, isn't it? This town is a fantasy. Hi, you want to get married? Actually, I was just here for a burger and fries. There's only one city like it, Las Vegas. This is the new Trans Am. And it's very hungry. the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Chicago has really got the pace of the game exactly where they want it. John Paxson guarded by Dennis Johnson. Michael Jordan guarded by Danny Ainge who's shadowing him. They're game, isolated. Game of isos right now. Isolation. They double team now. Walton has come out to meet Jordan. Jordan trying to use his quickness and it works. Michael Jordan with 44 now in the ball game. And Walton afraid to foul that time. Backed off Jordan a little bit. Walton with five. Next foul and he's gone. Oakley in there. Guarding Walton. Woolridge on Bird. Bird with 34. Keep in mind, Bird didn't get his first points until 15 and a half minutes were gone into the game. And the two stars we talked about at the top have not disappointed in a soul. Walton trying to double now, picking up Jordan. Jordan isolated one-on-one. -on -one. They come out. Basket, no. No basket. The foul before. And Bill Walton is fouled out of the ball game, I believe. Walton is fouled out of the ball game and has played tremendously for the Boston Celtics today. A little pick and roll action forces Walton to end up with Michael Jordan. And he alertly knows that Walton's in foul trouble and has a good opportunity to take it to the hoop. Now Walton's kind of bumped him before the shot was taken. Jordan misses the first. Walton, 10 points and 15 rebounds today. Jordan hit his first 16 from the line before he missed there. And he misses both of them. That's the team. I think it might be, Dick. But you got to miss some free throws once in a while. I think Jordan right now, they did a, a great job of not asking him to do, do too much too early. Just under six minutes to go. Fourth period. Celtics leading by four. And they'll call the foul away from the ball. Michael Jordan, two fouls on Jordan. Parrish in the ball game. He's playing with four fouls. Bill Walton fouled out of the ball game. Dennis Johnson is playing with five. Bird triple teamed all of a sudden. Paxson gets back to Johnson. And a good, quick defensive move by Paxson. Yeah, but uh, DJ didn't swing the ball like they normally do to the wide open Danny Ainge, who's had a hot hand here. Jordan cuts the Celtic lead to two, and he has 46 points. 523 remaining. Keep in mind, the Boston Celtics went into this game with a 41-1 and -one record at Boston Garden, including game one victory over Chicago on Thursday. Corzine on McHale. 
Double again with Paxson. Harris in the crowd. Jordan the rebound. And Chicago, knowing when to double, alertly playing good team defense. Uh, confusing them. They're not, the Celtics are not aware all the time of where the double is actually coming from and who the open man is. Bird winds up with the ball. Oh. And gets it to Ames. Three on one Boston. Johnson to Ames. And a whistle. Chicago foul as Ainge is slow getting up. This is kind of playoff intensity as John Paxson. You know, that was a pretty good no call on Bird with that outlet pass. Was going down when he made that outlet pass. They easily could have called a foul on that, but the Celtics still didn't get a hoop out of it and not a free throw either. Harris gets free. Harris with only eight points in the ball game, his first point since the opening period. But it's good enough to give the Celtics a four-point lead, 108-104. Nearly four and a half to play. Jordan is short. McHale lead pass. Coxon tops it over, and Ainge was hit in the eye. Jordan brings it up. Ainge staggered for the moment, and a foul called against Bird. Coxon was shaken up, and so is Danny Ainge. That was a collision on that long McHale outlet pass. A great athletic move here by Paxson to go over the top of Ainge. And then Ainge gets hit in the jaw by Paxson's elbow. And Paxson really took a, took a header, too. Two down and eight to go. <laughs> Larry Bird was called for his fifth personal foul. I have not never seen as many fouls called in a game like this. <laughs> I'm going to see Bird on this outlet pass right now. Somebody's got him. They're holding him. That's where I, I said before they could have called the foul. Corzine. They're going Corzine, which wasn't called, and it was like maybe a good no call because the officials felt that they had the Celtics had a good fast break advantage. Chicago's been missing from the line as of late. Something they can't afford to do here. Trailing by four with 4.23 to go. One out of two for Charles Oakley. So Bird with five fouls. Dennis Johnson has five. Walton has fouled out of the game. Parrish, who has four, is on easy street <laughs> compared to the others. 4-11 remaining. Bird beating Parrish. Block. A block by Woolridge, I believe, or Jordan. We'll check. Chicago with a chance to cut it to one. What a morale builder that defensive stint was for the Bulls. Jordan. Looks like lately the Bulls have been going to Jordan like they did at the start of the last game. Here he is, the move and the basket. And it's a one-point game as Stan Allbeck urges his team on. 108-107, that much time to go in the fourth. This is not the time, though. I mean, I don't know, Tom, what do you think to ignore the other guys because you're going to need somebody. Well, did Jordan I, do it himself? I think Jordan is the guy to go to right now at this phase, okay. uh, portion of the game. But the Celtics got to find somebody. Ains with a fake on Corzine. Hits the shot. Three-point lead again for Boston. It looks to me like the Bulls are going to double anything down low that the Celtics try to use McHale or Parrish. So it may end up in a lap of Danny Ainge and Dennis Johnson to win this ball game for the Celtics. Jordan beating Corzine. Hook shot. Good. Corzine, they've rarely gone to him. Six points in the game for the veteran. And it's 110 to 109. But it's, it's been the Bird and Jordan show. Bird with 34. Michael Jordan has 48 on top of his 49 in game one on Thursday night. Uh, using that little pick and roll beautifully up top, Jordan and Corzine. There's the time. McHale <laughs> misses the shot. And the rebound by Oakley. And now Chicago looking to take the lead. Bulls led most of the way. 11-point Bulls in the first half, a 10-point lead in the second half. Celtics have fought back. Jordan, short jumper, and it drops, and 50 points for Michael Jordan. That's you, what Dominique Wilkins had for the Atlanta Hawks yesterday. You get him moving left, and he's still, you think you're going to have an advantage. He's got to bring the ball back to you, but his leaping ability normally takes you right over the top. 11 on the clock, in the Paris, foul. Jordan is saying it was before the shot. And that 
will result in a timeout with 2.10 to go on the clock of this heated affair. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. There have been only seven Wheaties champions this century. Better make that eight. Introducing Tiger Woods, a new generation of Wheaties champion. <clears throat> this is one of those new Volvos with all-wheel drive, right? Yes. It's our newest safety feature, designed to help keep you out of an accident. <laughs> so how come you don't put it on all your cars? All our cars? Like Subaru does. Subaru. Every Subaru we make comes with the safety of all-wheel drive. Every wagon, every coupe, every sedan. So only one Volvo has all-wheel drive, but they all have cup holders. Yeah. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. Tonight at 7, Bud Greenspan profiles Bob Beeman, Nadia Comaneci, and other athletes on Reflections in Gold, The Untouchables. Then, old reliable Tommy Hendrick talks about the pride and tradition of the New York Yankees on Distant Replay. And at 8, Air Jordan leads Carolina against Steve Alford Futures in the 1984 NCAA Tournament. Tonight on Classic Sports Network. 2-10 remaining. 111, 110, Chicago leading. Parrish, guarded by Oakley. Give and go to Danny Ainge and a foul with 201 on the clock. And Charles Oakley has picked up his fifth personal foul. The rookie from Virginia Union, who's been as good as any rookie in the second half of this year. Better than most. Ainge. A rare miss for Danny Ainge, a 90 percenter from the line. Now will try to tie it up for the Celtics. A very cocky kid, loves to be in these type of situations. We want to welcome the audience that saw the Washington Bullets and the Philadelphia 76ers. This is Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. We're under two minutes to go in a tie game. The Celtics trying to take a 2-0 lead over the Bulls. The 76ers are 1-1 one one now with their victory over Washington. Michael Jordan has been a sensational show again. 52 points for Michael Jordan. And Chicago leads by two. The leading scorers in this game, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird. And the Bulls are within 134, becoming only the second team to beat the Celtics in the Garden this year. Harris, McHale, offensive rebound. Knocked out of bounds. Celtics wanted goaltending. Jordan knocked it out of bounds. No call from the officials. Jordan, by the way, also 16 points in this period. Celtics trying to find the matchup that they that can be the most productive. They try to use McHale. Corzine did a decent job on him. Now they're going, I think, maybe go to Parrish. Ten on the clock. Double on Parrish. Dennis Johnson penetrates. Draws the foul and gets the basket. Big play by Dennis Johnson. Can you imagine he didn't make the all-star team? There may not be a more clutch, clutch backcourt performer in the league all around than Dennis Johnson. As the double team, they went, left Dennis Johnson, and he took it to the pack, and Paxson did not get over there quite quick enough. Dennis scored, got a chance for the three-point play. So tough to, as a penetrating guard because he's 6'5", and he's got that solid body. He didn't take the outside shot. He took it to the hoop. Tough penetrator. Celtics by one. All eyes on Jordan with 52. Oh. Short. But there's Oakley fighting inside. No foul. Block. Robert Parrish picks it off. And the Celtics with under a minute to go has the lead by three. Make it one. 114. Now it's three. Ains to Parrish. McHale. Twenty-seven for Kevin McHale. Two study years gone by, you could watch Truman's surprise win over Dewey in 1948. Or check out the surprise win of the Miracle Mets in the 1969 World Series. You could study Nixon's near-perfect sweep in the 1972 election. Or watch total perfection as the 72 Dolphins become the NFL's only undefeated team. If you see history a little differently, watch the classic years in sports. Sunday at 7 Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. 
Does a car have instincts? Can it anticipate the next curve? One car can make you believe it does. With a patented steering and suspension system, you have the agility to outsmart the most elusive of roads. Get low 1.9% financing or great lease rates on Intrigue and all Oldsmobiles. Intrigue, a sophisticated twist on a sports sedan. Classic Sports Network presents This Day in Classic Sports, April 23rd, 1994, the voice of sport. After this. What's your nickname? Beast. I all went back to like three years ago. There was this court and I took the ball and I just brought it back like this. Beast from there. Those guys inspired me because that's all I used to do is just don't watch them and just do their dumps. Uh, things like this just makes it strive even harder. Like up here and you got to get up there. 10% physical, 90% uh -huh, mental. NBA Authentic Gear, redesigned by Starter, Nike, and Champion. Get your NBA gear at JCPenney. April 23, 1994, Howard Cosell, the voice of Monday Night Football, and the man who revolutionized sportscasting, dies at the age of 74. In his heyday, the outspoken Cosell was one of sports' most recognized personalities. Tune in every day for This Day in Classic Sports. Stars, they shine, they shimmer, and boy, can they shoot. Classic Sports Network presents Phi Beta Classics, the most exciting college basketball games in history with the biggest stars of the game. Jordan, Ewing, Wilkins, Drexler. So if you want to see some stellar college hoop action, watch Phi Beta Classics tonight at 8 Eastern, only on Classic Sports Network. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. And the Chicago Bulls have talked things over. 116 to 113, 45 seconds to go. Tommy? Well, I, if it doesn't go to Michael Jordan, I'll be very surprised. But what they really have to do, Mike, uh, the Celtics will be jumping at him, is on the shot by Jordan. If he misses, everybody bang the board. Paxson. Corzine in the corner, inside to Oakley, and a foul. Paris, that'll be his fifth personal foul. Five on Robert Paris. So they went to someone else other than Michael Jordan and Casey Jones. Well, they beat the, the Boston press, and here's Oakley underneath, and there was the foul on Paris. Bird had a hand on the ball. Boston went up and challenged Michael Jordan. Oakley, 66% from the line on the year. Four for five today. But when they pushed it up, the rest of the uh, defense of the Celtics wasn't into play. Good move by Paxson to create it. And the Celtics lead by two. And now Chicago has to play defense right here and not allow the Celtics to score, and perhaps not to foul, they'll get another possession. 23 seconds and 11 on the shot clock. Bird, guarded by Woolridge. Bird fires it up blindly. Harris loses it to Oakley. And there are eight seconds to go, and Chicago calls timeout with six on the clock. Now, two-point ball game, Chicago. Larry Bird throw up a wild shot. Paris seemingly had the ball, and there was Stan Albeck looking on as Oakley ultimately wound up with the ball. That was a four-hop play. And Stan, right on it, calls the timeout. But here's Bird being double-teamed. I think he was really hoping he'd get a foul call that time. Parrish has the rebound, and a nice knockaway by Jordan right into the hands of Oakley. Well, they got the ball to the man they wanted, Larry Bird. Uh, not the best judgment that time. He thought he might have gotten fouled. That's why he let it All fly. Right. So six seconds to go, Tommy. The obvious thing is to let Michael Jordan do it, either outside or inside. He has a career high of 52 points. Tremendous effort by Michael Jordan. What are the options now for Stan Albeck other than Michael Jordan, or is that it? Well, he's your number one guy that can get by a man, but the, all the Celtics are going to be running at him. If they can get the ball to him quickly, They'll be able to get a shot, a quick shot, and a potential rebound. Uh, more for the 
the, the fact that the Celtics will be concerned about him, that's why I want the ball in his hands and hope that he makes the shot. If not, you've got almost a guaranteed shot at a good rebound opportunity. Bulls have one timeout left. They led most of the way in this game. 11 in the first half, 10 in the second. Celtics whittled the lead. They were down by three after three period and open up a lead of no more than four points with seven minutes to go and a little less than that. And Chicago fought back, had the score tied it a couple of times. They went back and forth. And now it's a two-point game. The other question is, as Kyle Macy takes his jacket off, do you go for three and try to gamble and win it all here? Well, you might because uh, the three-point play for Kyle Macy is an easy shot. And that penetration by uh, Jordan might create that, but he also may make the basket himself and get the foul. I got a couple of ways they can score three points here. They have one timeout left, six seconds to go. Paxson will inbound. And now the Celtics call a timeout. Is there something they saw? The lineup on the inbound play, I think, and who's in the ball game. They just recognized Macy was in there, I believe, and now they said, uh, let's talk it over what we're going to do with Macy. Now, what could they do with Macy? Now they have several possibilities for outside shots, Jordan and Macy being just two of them. Well, by putting Macy in the ball game, what you have is the potential of uh, the defense extending. All right, we'll be back with the finish. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. Ford claimed Expedition as biggest in its class because Chevy Suburban is so large. It's in a class of its own. We couldn't have said it better ourselves. Chevy Suburban is the largest, most powerful sport utility vehicle on the face of the planet. Hey, go work too late, kid. Thanks. Introducing Tiger Woods, a new generation of Wheaties champion. Hi, I'm Bob Pettit of the Basketball Hall of Fame, and you're watching Classic Sports Network. The Chicago Bulls have given the Boston Celtics a tremendous battle today, but need two points to tie, perhaps three to win with six seconds to go. Michael Jordan with a career high of 52 points. On the heels of 49 in game one. Larry Bird with 34 points and 11 rebounds today. And talking about whether to go for three or two, keep in mind that Bird has five fouls, Parrish has five, Walton's out of the game. Chicago may be better off going for two, but who knows? They got Paxson and Macy in there. By having them in the lineup, that might extend the Celtics defense. Wedman is in for Boston for defensive purposes. That's the change the Celtics made. Michael Jordan working against Dennis Johnson. Clock running down. Three seconds. Three-point shot. No good. And a foul. Late sweep. A foul against Kevin McHale has been called by Middleton. With no time showing on the clock. Kevin McHale can't believe it. Kevin McHale has been called for the foul on Michael Jordan from eight feet beyond the three-point line. I have to see it myself. Here's Kevin coming all the way, and we didn't see what actually happened, but players do fake the foul. He can tie it up here and send the game in overtime. No time remaining. He made his first 16, then missed two before he made the one, and this is pressure. Time in game two of our best of five first round NBA playoff. And the Chicago Bulls are trying to do what only the Portland Trailblazers have done so far this year beat the Celtics in Boston. And the foul trouble situation becomes major now as we have a slew of players with five. Celtics control. Their biggest lead was four. 
Biggest lead for the Bulls was 11 in the first half. McHale against Corzine, doubled with Jordan. Loses the ball. Recovers it. Bird. Ames. Ames. And Corzine holds on for the rebound. As that double team again, they had trouble finding the open man. Kevin McHale normally is able to find and locate that open man. Jordan's 54 points ties John Havlicek for the fourth best individual's single game effort in playoff history. Long range, Jordan hits it. 56 for Jordan. And that ties the Chicago Bulls all-time leader, Bob Love, who had 56 in a game. And the Bulls lead by two. That kind of answers your question about whether it's tied or not. You don't start hitting outside shots like that, the tail end of a ball game, if you're tied. I think he was used wisely in the offense in the early part of the game by Stan Albeck. Pick and roll, Harris. Rebound by Oakley. And Chicago with a little more than a minute gone by with a two-point lead and content to walk it up floor. 1-0 Celtics lead in the best of five. Philadelphia, Washington are tied 1-1 one one in their best of five series. That pick and roll is working beautifully for the Bulls. Woolridge over Ames, short. McHale clears, and the Celtics looking to tie it up. Bird, Ames. That's what they didn't do most of the game. Tommy run the floor. It takes willpower to create tempo to push it at the defense. They've been playing at the rhythm of the Bulls all afternoon long. Ames 20 points in the ball game. Bird leads with 34. Jordan is 56. 10 on the clock. Woolridge going in strong. No basket. They call him for the offensive foul. And that'll be five on Orlando Woolridge. So Woolridge and Oakley have five fouls for Chicago. Bird, Parrish, Dennis Johnson, and Danny Ames all with five for the Celtics. And they're all on the floor. Bird trying to feed inside. It's still Celtic ball with 2.55 on the clock. Ainge, baseline, fires it up. Bird loses the ball inside, and Oakley got a piece of that one. 118, 118, 2.45 remaining in overtime. Jordan hit two free throws with no time on the clock to send it into OT. Throws up a wild shot here. Celtics trying to take the lead two on one. Parrish is fouled by Paxson. So this is where we are. Game two, and the drama is not over yet here at the Garden. Philadelphia and Washington are one and one. The Nets and Milwaukee play later with the Milwaukee Bucks leading one to nothing in their best of five. And Atlanta will take a 2-0 lead to Detroit this week in their series. The Celtics right now on that defense were trying to disrupt the rhythm of uh, the, the Bulls' offense by doubling people, taking the ball out of the hands of the people the Bulls want to have the ball. Michael Jordan, Woolrich, and it's creating a little confusion for the Bulls. They're not going to get the good shots, it looks like, but Boston has to convert. One-point lead for the Bulls, Jordan and Johnson fighting for the loose ball you want to talk about macho pride for offense and defense right there and the bulls will have it with 17 seconds on the clock leading by one check that the celtics lead 119 118 free throw by parish the difference right now woolridge going up strong and it's chicago now 120 to 119 Sit back and watch this one. They're taking shots at each other. Haymakers. This crowd is quiet. Harris lost it to Corzine. And under two minutes to go, Chicago with a one-point lead and the ball. This is a team that lost 52 games this year. The worst record of any team in the playoffs. Celtics with the best record in the league, 67-15. and 15. But They're this close. Three on the shot clock. George, basket, good, and a foul. And a big basket for the Chicago Bulls. And Jordan could give them a four-point lead. 58 for Michael Jordan. Why isn't he tired right now? Well, two things, I think. One, he missed a great portion of the season. He doesn't have the normal fatigue. And two, they used him very wisely in the offense in the first part of the game. Dennis Johnson has 
Let's see. Fouled out of the ball game, and Jerry Seasting has come in. He fouls out with 15 points. 59 for Michael Jordan. Second best playoff ever in a single game to Elgin Baylor's 61. We could see an all-time record established. Seasting in a crowd. Ball away. Basket good and a foul. Jerry Seasting with three or four men on him, and he's only 6-1, made a big basket for Boston. And he did something that the rest of the Celtics have not been doing. He faked when he got into the defense, lifted people, and then took the shot. Smart play by Jerry Seasting. Foul on Jordan is fourth. Seasting misses the free throw. Parrish and Seasting each have missed one important free throw here. Otherwise, this game would be tied. Final round of the Heritage coming up after this game. 123-121 Chicago in overtime. Jordan. And Bird got a hand on it. Great play by Larry Bird as he anticipated the pass out by Jordan. And the Celtics are looking to tie or lead. Bird. Harris. Foul. That was the only play Chicago had and even the Celtics are off their chairs. Here he comes. Bird cuts off Jordan at the baseline. They turned him loose. Pushed him underneath the basket. The ball, a pass out, hit the net, so it ends up in the hands of Robert Parrish. And I'll tell you this, this is one rugged overtime period in fourth quarter. I'll tell you, they're going at each other physically. They're banging. I'm here to tell you I'm the best teammate you've ever had. Watch Kirk Gibson go to bat. Watch Distant Replay now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, only on Classic Sports. watching classic sports that day in Boston Michael Jordan was pursuing a record set in 1962 by Elgin Baylor former Laker great who scored 61 in a playoff game that was the most that anybody had done until that day in 1986 what would be more remarkable for Elgin Baylor to do what he did when the game was what it was back in 1962 or for Michael Jordan as the game existed in 1986 to break his mark what would be better I would say what Elgin did in 62 because the game was much slower and the defenses I think were more attuned to denying one player. It was Elgin by the way who sort of gave you an early lesson in cool didn't he? Tell me what happened. Well when I was a rookie I, I used to guard Oscar and Jerry and one day I was guarding Elgin I was all over him thinking I was going to intimidate him. He just <laughs> looked at me and drove right around me and, and laid the ball up. So at that point that's how I developed my unflappable demeanor on the court. Did he tell you to just you know, chill out? Well, his eyes said that as he oh, looked really? around me, yeah. So I, I learned not to show expression on the court, and then no one really knows what you're thinking. You loved your defense. What would you have done against Jordan if he was hitting shots the way he was this day in Boston? There's not much you can do. Like I said, I, I respect Dennis Johnson. He's a tremendous defensive player, and Michael just pulverized him. Well, let's go back and see how this winds up. Back to Boston Garden, where the Bulls are leading by one, and Michael Jordan is setting his sights on that record of Elgin Baylor for most points in a playoff game set back in 1962. Michael Jordan, 59 points. Elgin Baylor, the all-time single-game performance of 61. That's ever against the Celtics. Regular season and playoff. And Baylor, 61, was against the Celtics in a playoff game in April of 62. And that's the top performance in a playoff game, and Jordan is two points away from that. Meanwhile, Robert Parrish is on the line with one free throw to try to tie the game now. Well, they put the freeze on him, trying to chill him down. Let's see if Robert responds to the challenge. He hit one of two before, makes them both here. They're tied at 123. 59 seconds to go. We were even at 116 apiece in overtime going into the session. Jordan over Ames. Bird the rebound. Celtics with 20 on the shot clock. And it's knocked away from Bird. He recovers. 
looking for anything, even a foul. Goes up, and he travels. Larry Bird traveled. And to Chicago's credit, they surrounded him in a hurry. Well, they were poking at the ball, and Larry really was looking over both shoulders to see where they were coming from, and that's what caused the walk. 21 on the shot clock, a 13-second differential. And the Bulls with a chance to take the lead. Woolridge against McHale, going in against both. Tipped up and in, and it was Corzine with the tip in. And with 22 seconds to go, the Bulls lead again. 125-123. And the Celtics will call a timeout and 15 seconds. And here it was. Dave Corzine, one of the unsung leaders on the team, maligned at home by the Chicago crowd with the biggest basket as he's ever had. Eight points and eight rebounds. 15 seconds to go for the Celtics to try to tie it or win it. Trailing by two. Third inbound. McHale. Aim with a fake. Goes all the way in and ties, ties it with 12 seconds left. Chicago still has two timeouts. They'll use one of them now. It looked like Ainge had easy sailing for that tying layup. Well, they were looking to play Ainge for the pass, and once he got past Michael Jordan, everybody went back to their own man, thinking he was going to penetrate and then pass. Nobody really made a real commitment to him, so he just said, why not? I'll go all the way, particularly Oakley. It's 125 all, 12 seconds to go in the first overtime session. Well, is Michael Jordan going to get it again? The Celtics are trying to keep the ball away from him. And it goes to Borzine. Borzine. He's got to get rid of it. Here's Jordan. Jordan with a jump shot. Jordan misses the shot. Two seconds to go, and the Celtics call a time. He'll get a chance to win it once more. The first the regulation ended when Michael Jordan missed a three-pointer and was fouled by McHale and hit two free throws with no time remaining. And now Boston can have the last lap. Ainge will inbound. Last year, the Celtics were hard-pressed by the Cleveland Cavaliers. They went to four games, but they were tough games. Banks comes in the game replacing Oakley. Tom. For quickness purposes, to get out there against the outside shooters. Ainge will inbound. Bird has it. One second to go. If it counts, it's over. And we go to second overtime. Larry Bird coming off the screen. Had the same kind of a shot he hit on that wild three-pointer. And we go to double overtime here at Boston Garden. Bird with five fouls. Parrish with five. Ainge with five. Walton and Dennis Johnson have already fouled out for Chicago. Charles Oakley and Orlando Woolridge both have five personal fouls. So Parrish and Woolridge will jump again. And they've done this before. Middleton will toss it up five minutes. Three timeouts apiece. Boston still has a 20 that they have at their behest. And penalty and bonus on the fourth team foul. And then they're going right at Danny Ainge, it looks like, or try to. Ainge is guarding Jordan inside right now. Oakley comes outside. Now Woolridge gets it in to Corzine, and Bird steals the ball. Came around, snuck around, and knocked it out of the hands of Corzine. They had uh, Michael Jordan posting up Danny Ainge, and they turned that option down. Bird, three-pointer from the corner. Oakley, all Chicago red shirts underneath, and now the Bulls will so slow it up and set it up here. Michael Jordan has 59 points, and the most points scored in one game ever in the playoffs is 61 by Elgin Baylor. Jordan missed. Corzine loses it. Here comes Ames as Bird gets it out to him. Paxson is back. Seasting open. Woolridge, a good play to get to him. A minute gone by. Bird hits. And the Celtics lead, and it took a minute and five seconds to do it. Seasting, real good poise to hold up and find Larry Bird. 36 points for Larry Bird. Seasting. On Paxson. McHale giving Woolridge that shot. Woolridge going into the hoop. Double for Bird and scores nonetheless. And 24 points now for Orlando Woolridge. And we're tied. Well, they're saying, Orlando, you're going to win it for us in the second overtime. Let Michael take a little blow. Speaking of Orlando, he's on Bird. Great inside move. Ball knocked away. And it was last hit off of Woolridge, who was out of bounds. So the Celtics will maintain possession 12 seconds on the shooting clock. 
Oakley, Corzine, Jordan, Paxson, and Woolridge are out there for Chicago. Parrish, Bird, Seasting, Ainge, and McHale from Boston. Bird, double in a hurry. Seasting is open. Celtics by two. Now that is absolutely the wrong guy to leave on a double team right now because Bird is going to look for him. And a little trap action defensively by the Celtics. But Paxson brings it across. Under three minutes to go in the second overtime session. We were 116 apiece after regulation, 125 all after one overtime. Corzine, no basket, traveled before the shot. He moved that back foot, and now the Celtics with a two-point lead and possession. That little pick-and-roll play is causing the Celtics trouble. They're switching on to Michael Jordan, and Corzine is getting a mismatch against the little guy. McHale, Zeesting, all alone three-point territory. Bird coming out. Bird throws it away. Long pass. Woolridge. Woolridge in the crowd. Blocked by McHale. Loose ball out of bounds. And it's Celtics possession. You know, Tommy, you wonder whether the Celtics looking for three points are saying to themselves, we've had enough of this Chicago team. Let's just blow them out here. Well, they got to go find some place to... To, to get that shot. Seasting's the guy. They should be looking on a double team. McHale finds Seasting. Quick pass. Good one. Eight. Timeout, Chicago. It matches the biggest lead of the game for the Boston Celtics with just under two minutes remaining in second overtime. 262nd consecutive sellout at Boston Garden are seeing a gem today. You're watching Classic Sports Network. Does a car have instincts? Can it anticipate the next curve? One car can make you believe it does. With a patented steering and suspension system, you have the agility to outsmart the most elusive of roads. Get low 1.9% financing or great lease rates on Intrigue and all Oldsmobiles. Intrigue, a sophisticated twist on a sports sedan. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over. Because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the Power Roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless Power Roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. The education of Dandy Dunn continues. We await the punt. Classic Sports Network presents a world premiere special event. Replay the history of the NFL on television. Okay. Broadcasters. We're on national television. I'll finish it right now. Directors. I had my cameras everywhere. They couldn't hide from me. Pioneers. This is the story of how football changed television and how television changed football. Replay the history of the NFL on television premieres Saturday at 8 p.m. on Classic Sports. You're watching the Bulls battle the Celtics on Classic Sports Network. The noise, too much for this young tyke. But he'll take it. This is the excitement of the game. So now it's 131-127. Chicago has the ball. And keep in mind that man, Michael Jordan, who has 59 points, has missed his last four shots. Well, he finally might be getting tired. No. <laughs> you don't think so? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he should have been tired an hour and a half ago. Ainge guarding Michael Jordan. Jordan goes up with a shot and hits it and has 61 points to tie Elgin Baylor's all-time single-game playoff record that he established against these Celtics 24 years ago. Mikhail working against Corzine. And Jordan the rebound. And with a minute and a half to play in two overtimes, Chicago looking to tie. And the Bulls took off the double team that time in respect for Seasting and Ainge's outside shooting. Jordan 
with eight on the clock. Jordan oh. ties the game. Oh, boy. 63 points, and you're looking at an all-time record. Oh, boy. Michael wow. Jordan. That, that was a fantastic move. I mean, he went over three guys that time. No one has ever scored more points in a single playoff game in NBA history than Michael Jordan. A minute to go, and tied at 131. Seven on the shot clock. McHale to Seasting. Open. And the Celtics regain the lead. And if you don't think Jerry Seasting has been maybe the missing ingredient to the Celtics this year, just see what he's done in this game. Eight points, but big eight points. An incredible shooting. He went down and doubled at the last instant, and Seasting got the easy shot. He's going to make those. McHale is on Jordan now with six on the clock. Oh! He missed. Harris, the rebound. Not to be denied. He grabbed it away from Oakley. Celtics with 24 seconds to go. And 17 on the shot clock. Lead by two, and this is a critical possession. How many times have we said that? 10 on the clock. Bird, pick and roll, Paris. big rebound and somebody hit him at the ankles I think the uh, great timing and as Oakley going down getting his foot trapped got it up the court a little pick and roll he goes strong to the hoop and just straight up with it that's pressure basketball making the big ones when they count they got nine seconds remaining to the Bulls and one timeout and they need two possessions really a three-pointer and they need a possession again I was very impressed with the real confidence of Jerry Seasting at key points. It's going to give Casey Jones, if he hasn't already got a world of confidence in Seasting, to use him in real key situations down the stretch. He is going to, he might end up in the playoffs being the designated double team breaker when the Celtics really try to exploit that inside game. They'll go to Chicago to play what the Bulls hope if they do not come back and win this one. Two games at Chicago Stadium. It's a best of five. The Celtics are nine seconds away from taking a two to nothing lead, but they won't escape out of here without the fight of their lives. You know, the other surprise is that Danny Ainge has not fouled out with Michael Jordan handling that ball. Bird so didn't much. foul out either. Well, I'm saying Ainge yeah. played very right. smart defense. He knew he had to stay in this game. Especially with Dennis Johnson fouling right. out. Right. Nine seconds to go. Chicago needs a quick basket, a foul. Hope the Celtics miss if they don't get a steal. And now the Celtics use a foul and chop off a second. Next foul will result in the bonus. So they had one foul to give in the overtime. Paxson looking inbound, Woolridge, six seconds, Woolridge for three, way short, throws up an air ball, and the Celtics will have it with four seconds to go. And a hard-fought victory for the Boston Celtics to take a two-to-nothing lead over Chicago in their best of five. 